Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. But when the guy's not going to get any fucking money for 10 years, uh, even Rufus Doofus will figure out, he doesn't even have to be Dutch or Persian to figure out he's getting fucked. But, I mean, uh, three years, uh, no interest is not unheard of. Uh, but I like to push the principal payments as far away as humanly possible. Uh, it's harder to push them far away when you're not paying interest. But if, if they don't bring it up, you don't bring it up. A lot of the um, stock documents that your lawyers use will have an Im implied interest in them. So you got to tell the meatheads, you know, take that part out. And they'll say, well, again, they've never done it. This well, I, what do you mean? You're going to have a five-year note with no interest? Read my lips, moron. Take the implied interest out. And, if, and then just get a new lawyer. Because, I mean, it's unheard of. But it's done all the time. You know, um, it's like absence of evidence. Pay attention, China man. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Does everybody understand what I just said? Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Just because you never heard the motherfucking done before doesn't mean it's not done that way. In the circles of friends, you know, nickels and dime and bubblegum uh, bill that you live in, it maybe isn't done that way. But in the, you know, the, as, as your parents would say, the unscrup unscrupulous money-hungry bastards, that's how it's done. That's how it's done. So remember, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Now, the analogy they used to use, which I think is a chicken, one, chicken shit one, when a tree falls in the forest, and you're not there. Does it make a noise? Now, I, uh, no, no, I can see some of the meat heads. If the tree goes down, boom, and you hear it, right? Now, now we're, we're sitting in the bar in the castle, and the tree goes down, boom, does it really make a noise? That's the old time absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. The, uh, I like, um, is your drunken sailor husband that promised fidelity to you, uh, and you're with him all the time, but now you're not with him all the time, is he still, does that promise of fidelity really happen? Well, I can already tell you 100% what the answer to that is. Uh, and one of our uh, team here, Kim, who's been with us a long time, her son just went off to the Navy. And uh, his first liberty was a few days ago. And I fully expected to, to get a call at the castle. He's been thrown in the brig. The drunken sailors, you know, going fucking nuts. But um, no such call. And I told him, tell, t tell Andrew that uh, American officer, I've been in a Navy brig. And you don't want to be in a Navy brig, even especially as, as a young uh, sailor. Okay. Did I answer your question? Okay, anything else about... Uh... Yes, sir. Um, I don't understand very well the difference between uh, equity, equity and, and, uh, and um, uh, um, turn turnover, annual turnover. What's turnover the... is revenue. Top line revenue is turnover. Top line revenue is turnover. Some organizations that are sales organizations, the top line revenue is the sales. So that's all they have. Did that explain it? So what was the second half of the question? The second was just a curiosity, if I can say. Okay, go ahead. All right. So what, the, what does the guy do with the money? Because it looks like... Uh, uh, 20 euro jacket, and uh, it looks well, like he, yeah, lives, he lives in a basement with uh, with. Uh, well, that is that is the basement of his office building. You're actually correct. Um, that he uh, he buys more, he invests uh, more property. He's got a lot of cash, and he you know he's got three penthouses, um, which I told him was a mistake because I've I've gone down that route. Uh, and when you say it's better to own a a house or a, a condominium or a penthouse instead of going to a hotel it's wrong you're right I mean you get tired of the penthouse and 
six, six times that you're there, and it's easier to call room service and have Mission Star restaurant downstairs. And, but anyway, so but now he's got three penthouses, and he just got married. I wasn't able to go to his wedding last year because of the Corona Rona. And um, the, um, he has, uh, legitimately has no friends, zero. Uh, he doesn't hang out, chill. All he does is work. He got married about a year ago um, to another workaholic, uh, Deloitte uh, gal. Mo most of these guys, I mean, unlike you, <clears throat> they, they don't go to, I, I say nobody, have you ever seen Bill Gates at a Super Bowl? No. Have you ever heard, seen Bill Gates at a World Series? No. <coughs> and I can go down the line. They don't go. That's time. Forget the kidnapping and all that shit. That's time. If, if you knew you were making a million dollars an hour, some of these guys make a million dollars a minute. A million dollars an hour, how much time would you take off? None. Zero. Um, he, he did QLA 11 years. How much money did he make? Well, I, I don't know per penny, but I mean, he's hundreds. Hundreds. Now, arguably, he's never been in a down market, which I remind him of. He's never been in a down market. So most of you kids have never been in a down market. You don't know what a down market is like. I mean, forget the uh, uh, black swan. Let's say I'm wrong. I know I'm not wrong, but let's say I'm wrong. You've never been in a down market, none of you in this room. Maybe a couple of the older guys. <clears throat> so maybe three of you in the room, four of you have been in, the, in a down market. Five of you. When it comes, kids, it takes everything that's precious to you. Your few pennies and your, uh, 401ks. Uh, having a 401k is a waste. Of, I, I'm not going to ask you how many have a 401k. That's a retirement plan in America. That's a, that's a joke. Those are jokes. The only reason the, uh, the companies, the big companies, gave it over to the individuals uh, to handle is because the companies fucked them all up. The, um, and your Social Security um, check, Social Security is the government kind of pension that you get in America. They have, you know, different countries have kind of pension. You work 25, 35, 40 years, you get some fraction of what you put in, plus matched by the government, and then they pay you. Uh, and it's normally not, uh, uh, you can't meet the standard of living for sure that you were used to living at. And that's why you see a lot of, it's wrongfully, and you're helping them with assisted living. There's two sides of this coin. Uh, a lot of little uh, old couples don't have enough money to. And the kids don't want to support them anymore. And so they're going to live in some little uh, mobile home park. Who's a mobile home guy? Yeah, okay. And a fucking little uh, caravan. That's a shitty way to end your life. But you're going to help them in assisted living. And you're not going to gouge them. And the, and the doctor's actually going to be there three days a week that they promise, which hardly anybody does, and you know, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna take care of them. So, uh, uh, by osmosis, I'm helping people to you meatheads. I, I, I wouldn't piss on their face if we were on fire. Literally. I'd save my ur urine up, instead of saving them their burning f flesh. Come on, China man, don't look so serious. Anything else about uh, Marcus? You don't like hearing that these guys, how hard it is. You don't, yeah, you don't like Thomas because he's, he's too aggressive. You don't, you know, and I mean, uh, all these guys are hard asses. Just some of them don't act like hard asses. You don't like the Belgium awful. Well, well, that, not, now, now the real mice are going to be coming out next week. The real mice that... Um, But if it, were, if it were that easy, everybody do this. There's a reason why, and the real reason why nobody does this but me, the real reason, 
not the uh, uh, PR reason, not the MRF reason, uh, not the YMCA reason, uh, is it's a hard motherfucker to teach, and it's a harder motherfucker for you to implement. As easy as it is. Otherwise, it's free on the website. Free! But to the best of my knowledge, I could be proven wrong, and YouTubers correct me if I'm wrong, there's no billionaire has been, been created that haven't attended the seminar. None. Maybe I can flush out some. I don't think there, I don't think there are. The, uh, not that a lot of guys, that, like the people that we talked about, the bricks earlier, that I didn't hear about in 26 years. Murph. Is he now uh, reinstating a board and going? Yeah, 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 yeah. Rebuilding the whole, the whole enchilada. He's going back because he's uh, he's taking it as far as he can go. But uh, the uh, it's it's tough to reproduce sales guys like Thomas and Marcus. It's it's it's, it's a bitch because, like he says, when you hire um, outsource sales, which he was asked. An outsourced salesman, he wants to sell something, not necessarily your thing. And, um, but, and it's tough to find salesmen as motivated as I am because the, they didn't have to convince me to sell. I just was convinced by the money. And, uh, I, and I was a selling son of a bitch. Some say I still am, but uh, but now I, I I'm not selling to uh, to prove anything because uh, I've already proved all that shit. But sales is really the easiest job on the planet. You don't have to know dick. And salesmen are the highest paid guys on the planet, and most of them are. Like the hunchback. And for those of you that have a hunchback, no disrespect. It's a compliment. And the, uh, my last story, I was called uh, by uh, a, uh, a uh, tax haven kind of company. They were gold-based. This is pre-corona-rona and pre-for-sure bitfuck about 15, 18 years ago, to go make a speech in uh, Tahiti. Uh, 5,000 guys that spent $5,000 to come to this. Uh, Anti-government, no taxation without representation, anti-this, anti-that, okay. And I went down there for a big fee. I can be bought, or at least I could be bought then. And uh, on the stage at a Sheraton Hotel in uh, Tahiti, and the air conditioner went out. It's about uh, 40 degrees outside, and now it's about 45 or 50 inside. And I'm perspiring. Well, I'm normally, my suit's wet anyway. My socks and underwear are wet when I, when I finish the talk. When I was at the one day uh, at Heathrow Airport, my underwear, my socks, everything was wet. I, when I went back to my suite and changed clothes. And so I'm dancing around the stage, and it didn't have, there's a good reason why we have stuff that you don't fall. I'm dancing around, and I used to run around like Zig Ziglar and jumping down. And the, uh, I got in the front row were wheelchair people, you know, disabled. But I couldn't really see. I could only see the tops of their heads. They, they, they didn't have bald people. The wheelchair people, uh, unbald, not bald. And I slipped at the edge. And as I went up, my legs went up like this. And, I, and then I could see, when I came back around, I could see wheelchairs. And one of the wheelchairs, the one right in front of me, a little gal had a little baby. So in those days, I used to wear big wingtips, you know, heavy shoes. So I tucked my knees in to try to make sure to not, not hit her and her baby. And I landed on my feet. All 5,000 went crazy. They thought it was part of my act. And they go, man, do it again, do it again. And I'm just thankful. I just thank you, Mama. And then, and then I, I, I kind of said, uh, excuse me, ma'am, I didn't mean this. She was frightened. She's screaming and crying. The baby thought it was a big deal, you know, big, a lot of fun. And the, uh, but um, it, 
if it was that easy, everybody would do it. There's no reason. Is there? There's no reason. I.e., the kids that have done it that I've never met. But I'm not, I'm not afraid that there'll be guys coming to do this. Because the first benchmark is, have they done it? But they all lie and said they've done it, even though they haven't. But guys, I mean, it's, it's there. It's there. Anything? Who's my 5.30? 6. 6.30. Okay, and uh, then uh, I will see you um, for cocktails. And uh, Duncan will be standing over there to hit the gong. Um, and um, tonight's just a movie. Nothing else to read. Um, the, uh, and we're getting down... Uh, like sex, it all comes at the end. We're 60% done, kind of like the 60-40 deal. And the 40 that we're going to talk about uh, tomorrow and the next day uh, is how you, uh, one, how you get a, a, uh, a seller to pay you to take their business, business off their hands, which is kind of fun, as Sally would say. Um, the, uh, some of the kids come just for that, because that's not on my website. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, the different uh, nuances of the seller's finance and uh, getting financial institutions accepted. And, but the, the bottom line is, you know, the, uh, not all banks will accept it, but enough banks will accept it for us to build a big business. And you use the seller's finance to build the base of your business. If you're going to build a $500 million business, the first $50 million or so, uh, should be predominantly with a lot heavily laden with seller's finance because that gives you a lot of latitude, a lot of latitude. And the better you can structure that seller's finance vis-a-vis -vis pushing out the payments, no interest, et cetera, the better off. Some of the banks, when you go to recapitalize the business, and when you recapitalize, that's a euphemism for taking money out, the banks won't believe that there's no, they think that you forgot to put the interest rate on these seller finance notes. They think that your accountants overlooked it. That, it's that strange. They won't believe, and some just won't believe it. Some will, you know, want to check. They think that there's some kind of fraud involved. And it's, but it's the way the, the business is. Okay, kids, we'll see you uh, tonight. Thank you. I'll see you my 530, 530.